Our lessons for today, uh, are, there are two. The first one is from Psalms, Psalm 127. Let us pray. Lord, we are grateful that you speak to us. Silence in us now, Lord, any voice but your own, that we may hear what you would have us hear and know what you would have us know for us today. Amen. Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb are a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. And our second lesson is from the letter of Paul to the Romans. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord.
of worship. Bless this house. Home. Church home. Home is where the heart is. <laughs> a house is not a home. In scripture, a house isn't even a house. Words have fine meanings and special impact. My mother was an English teacher. So I was brought up with a reverence for the fine meaning of words, not just the usual confusion of two, two, and two, or there and there, but more, more sophisticated distinction of things like home and house. I remember once going along with my mom and a realtor when she looked at possible houses to buy. The poor man said to her, there's another lovely home in this neighborhood. And I heard a low growling sound <laughs> that I was pretty sure only I could hear, fortunately, and I knew that actually to be the sound of my mother's blood pressure rising. <laughs> And when she got close enough that only I could hear her, she hissed at me, a lovely house, not a home. <laughs> See, a, a home is technically an emotional state of being, a mental place of refuge, not a geographic location. Although being with a person or a group of people can trigger that sense of home. Saying that we have found a church home probably has more to do with feeling as though we have found a family than finding a building. But not every house of worship is a church home. In scripture, when we find the word house, it has a different meaning too. When the psalmist says, unless the Lord builds a house, that house isn't a building. The house is a family, an extended family really, a tribe like the house of David. Your house would be your children, your siblings, your parents, your in-laws, your children's and your siblings' in-laws, but also your servants, your employees. In a hostile, nomadic environment, 
hospitality laws demanded that strangers might come to you and they demanded that you give them protection. And if they stayed, they would become guests. And guests could become family. And some would become formally adopted. Adopted members had all the rights and privileges of other family members. If the Lord was the architect of the house, if God had assembled and bound members in the household, then the house was secure strong and safe against any enemy, against any misfortune. It takes trust to accept God's plan, to follow God's design. And keeping a diverse household together is always a challenge. I recently from one of you, became aware of an article called Full House by Melissa Fay Green. She tells about what happened when she and her husband Don created a family of nine children in a rather unusual way. Melissa and Don had four birth children. Um, their names were Molly, she was the oldest, and then Seth and Lee and Lily. When Molly, the oldest, turned 18, Melissa and Don adopted a four-and-a-half-year-old girl, Jessie, from a Bulgarian orphanage. And then when Seth turned 18, they adopted a five-year-old, Helen, from Ethiopia. And things were going so well with that, they were up to six now, things were going so well that they speeded up the timetable and they didn't even wait for Lee to turn 18, they, they went ahead when he was 16 and, and adopted another. So now they have seven kids. And Melissa went to Ethiopia to write a book and she took Lee with her. He stayed on to do some volunteer work and Melissa went back home. And one night the phone rang. It was Lee on the phone from Ethiopia, and he said, Mom, uh, do you think that we have any plans to adopt anymore? And uh, she, she said, do you have someone in mind? Now, Don was listening.